would like to announce or actually have Charlene Suzuki stand up and just say a little bit about what that is so you know that your dollars are really going for something that makes a difference. So, would you mind, Charlene? You use my old last name, which is always funny, oh, but oh, that's sorry. okay. Thank you. It's, it's, it's uh, Charlene Ray, but a lot of people do know me as Suzuki, so they you. haven't made the switch yet. So you're helping some people. Good, I know that. So I know you're all helping some people with that. <laughs> so yes, that's right. You know about that. So I just wanted to um, first express my gratitude for um, this benefiting our rite of passage program. I this is a year-long program that Baby School right down the street and neighbors. Our wonderful school has a year-long program for its graduating seniors. They spend the entire year reflecting on their lives so far and taking a look at where are they going as they head into adulthood. And because our culture doesn't mark rites of passage the way we used to or indigenous cultures do, we have decided to um, do that at our school. And so we have this powerful program. And last year was our first time we did a vision quest with the program. And we are all set to leave next Thursday, June 9th, we we'll have our second group go out on Vision Quest as the culmination of this um, year-long program. We have 15 young people heading out to the high desert in eastern Washington mm -hmm. to spend their solo time uh, reflecting on their lives, and they'll come back um, on June 14th, and the very next day graduate mm -hmm. June 15th with Thomas Ferry Hall. Wow. So you can all be invited to, to attend that as well. But, um, it's a powerful, powerful program, and we maybe sometime can do a whole talk on it because there's lots that the students could share with you and listening to their stories is amazing. And there will be a community event that you can look for on Drew's list um, that will have in July where you will be invited to come and listen to their stories. It's very powerful for them to tell their story. So I'm just so appreciative of you coming out tonight. But I know you mostly came for Drew because he's way cool and interesting, but um, it also benefits our program. Thank so, thank you. You. so um, this will be sitting there. I know that cash will be taken. If somebody doesn't have cash and needs to write a check, is there somebody or some... They can make it out to, to me. To Charlene, right? Yeah. Okay. That's easier to yeah. sell. Yeah. <laughs> so that's out there. So thank you in advance for your generosity. And by the way, um, other than just the small expenses of the ads and the record, all the proceeds go to them. Thank you. Um, let's see, we covered bathroom, we covered that, we covered future events. And um, I'll do a quick personal plug because in October of next year is the famous Friends of Friends, uh, Mr. South Whitby. <laughs> so for any of that hasn't been there, including myself, please choose to come this year. And when you decide to donate, donate to me because I'm going to be oh, one of your best. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll start putting my plug way in advance for Friends of Friends. And, I'll, and I nominated you, actually, too. I've done it before. You've done it before? Yeah, the rich guys win. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm done for this. They got, they got a network. Friends and family and influence. Yeah. 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 Birds with family. Yeah. 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 Where are you? Yes, October 8th. Saturday, October 8th. Anyway, without further ado, um, it is my great pleasure to introduce a kindred spirit and um, Drew, Drew's List Campion. <laughs> and, um, you know, tonight really, for me, is a, is a night of, that I'm very excited about because I share and I see in Drew really things that if I had the energy and time I'd be doing and don't have nearly the time to do, and you're doing so much better. And I don't know how you managed to do it. Um, good thing you're retired. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> And I, and I find that, you know, what it really wasn't until recently that we got some one-on-one -on -one time. And that's really the one benefit of these dialogues is really to have some one-on-one -on, -one on 32 time to really start to get to know somebody and why and better. And so for me tonight is really about creating community and using you to help really synergize creating community and hear your ideas. And also from the audience, what is going to really collectively generate this localism, this community, and take it to the next level. So I think we just have to start with the idea of how did Drew's List start and where was the inspiration for it and begin there. Okay, thank you. Uh, so um, about 20 years ago, how long ago? No, 15 years ago, I did a, a, a local independent newspaper here. 
and it was called the Island Independent, and it, uh, we uh, ran for three years to the day, uh, and it was a fortnightly, came out every two weeks, came out every other Thursday, and um, it was a bioregional publication. It uh, was, a, was kind of a magazine and newsprint, and it addressed um, Whidbey, Camano, Fidalgo, the San Juan Islands, Port Townsend, kind of the whole northern uh, area. We, we dubbed it the Maritime Rain Shadow. Mm -hmm. And eventually we were, di we were distributing out to Port Angeles, up to Victoria, up to Bellingham, uh, a couple places in Vancouver, BC, um, at, uh, Mount Vernon, mm -hmm. Everett, uh, uh, and down to um, what's, uh, a couple of the big bookstores in Seattle, one of the alternative coffee shops in Seattle. So it was, it was kind of a deal, exactly. And um, that was a great thing. It was, it was, a, it was amazing. Can you start it up again? <coughs> Can you start it again? I well, this, <laughs> to address your question, uh, how did the Drizzle start? About two years ago, <laughs> so I'll get there, Craig. <laughs> About two years ago, I was, uh, I'm working on two books simultaneously. And I was. And, uh, and I started to realize that at some point these books were going to stop. And I was devoting everything to these two books. Mm -hmm. And when they ended, the cash cow would dry up and I was going to drive off the end of a cliff. Or I had to have an alternative plan in mind. And so I thought, wow. And I could have been leaning on the doorway of starting the Independent again since it shut down. Because it was the most, I've done surf magazines and international publications and books and stuff a bit. And uh, that was the most fun, and it was also the most uh, impact. I mean, I realized you know, that every historic event that's ever happened, all those things that fill the history books, mm -hmm. they all happened in somebody's neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Local is everything. Everything mm -hmm. is, it's, it, you know, this idea that there's some abstraction where things happen, it is not. I mean, everything happens locally. And then you know, when I did the Independent, I found out that the content available in the, on the yeah. local level was as rich or richer than the content on the global, national, whatever level, state level. It's just, it's huge. It's, so there's no, it's just a question of orientation. So, uh, so I've been leaning on that door to open it again ever since it had to shut down. The only reason it shut down is because we couldn't, we couldn't find anybody to sell ads in the Northern Territory. And we just couldn't, and we were doing pretty good when we went out. We would have, we would have made it if we had a warm body, you know, and we didn't have a warm body. So, um, so I've been doing other things. So I, so I realized these books were going to stop, and I need to have something. So I thought, well, I'll, good chance I'll start the independent again. I said, well, I should, I'm going to do that because times have changed. Now that we have this internet, and everybody's got it. Everybody's got email now. I said, well, I'll start a, a little mailing list, and I'll start to build a constituency so that when I launch the independent, there'll be people out there that will kind of get with it. You know, you know, we'll have a hit the ground running. And I, I and instead of doing it regionally, I think. It would be better to start it like South would be and let it just organically develop, and it, which it can do more effectively with the web, though I still am uh, pretty married to the idea of newsprint. Because I like newsprint because it's a very democratic medium and anybody can get it. You don't have to have a computer. It's, it was a free publication, so if anybody can look at it, it's going to be on the ferry. You know, there's, there's, there are access advantages to newsprint, but there are other access advantages to digital, so the web. So it seems like instead of a mono hall, this incarnation of the independent will be a twin hall, catamaran. Mm -hmm. So catamaran, and the sale <laughs> is the advertising always. That's what drives everything, because people want to get the word out. So anyway, I started this list, and I started, I think I, I went through my Rolodex and um, and uh, I had about 230 Green Bank and South emails. So I started sending the odd thing. Since the Independent, and I was kind of um, in circulation with stuff, people would send me kind of interesting things. So I started to take advantage of that uh, coincidence in my email and pass certain things on. To try to be really selective and put cool things out. And in the beginning, every email was an individual item. Mm -hmm. And um, so after, so the first thing, it's two, 230. Do you think of that as like the good old days? No, <laughs> no. I was working on two books, remember. So I was busy. In fact, one book just came off press in Asia, of course. Um, so I was doing a book while I'm doing this as well. So I've grown this whole thing while I'm doing two books. And uh, 
So, um, so I sent these 230 emails out, and about I got about um, six responses saying, "What the hell do we want more junk mail for? Get me off this list right away." <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, oh, geez, you know, this is not going to be good, you know. But it really got quiet quick, and then, and, and so these those six people got off the list, and uh, and then after a, a month or two of, of just like the occasional email, um, somebody said, you know, hey, I heard about your list, put me on. Cool. So I signed up a person, and at some point uh, I started to learn about the address book, and which uh, you know I had recent revelations about. <laughs> so this, this, the, the problem with this whole thing is it developed organically, and it's also the good thing about it. And so, um, so then people started to kind of accumulate, and by that was February 2009 is where I can track my first kind of uh, faint in this direction, and then in um, 2010 February. I was up to 560. Wow, interesting. And so it started to have its own thing. And uh, people started to tell me things like, I'm like, well, you should be charging for this thing. What are you doing here? You know, what are you? So a lot of, lot of uh, management uh, suggestions started to come in. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> everybody, everybody knows how to do this. <laughs> I'm surrounded by geniuses. It's fantastic. And, uh, and then, uh, and then I looked, and in February of 2011, I was uh, I was at about 1,300 people. Mm -hmm. And today, after losing 200 people during my recent crisis, I was I'm at 1906. So I'm closing on 2,000. I'll be at 2,000. I can pretty much predict that I'll be at 2,000 um, in about another you know, like a month, less than a month. And the, the interesting thing is that when I was at 560, like last year, and I um, I had a feeling, well, you know, where's this going to go? And somebody, I was probably talking with somebody, and, and I thought, well, well, given the population of South Whidbey and the fact that I'm limiting this pretty much to Green Bank and South, I thought, you know, I think there's 7,000 households, sort of, and I think, I think this thing is going to top at about 1,000. Mm -hmm. and, in, in, and indeed, I, and I watched my little address book scorecard, you know, that's how I'm doing. <laughs> and uh, it got to 999, 998.00. 996. Uh oh, uh, 999 again. 1001. 997. <laughs> yeah, it went like that, you know. And then it started to go faster. And so then I plotted it out on a curve. And the curve was like a straight, from your angle, a straight line going like this. And I hit 1000 and it started to go a little steeper. It's been going steeper ever since. It's really weird. So it, it's counterintuitive the way it, you know, and, and this got me asking a lot of questions. About because one of the reasons besides this independent idea, uh, I didn't know much about social media, and I've always wanted to have an example in my life of critical mass. What's critical mass about? I've heard about, hear about this. I see things going off, and, and I, you know, I'm not interested in like a, a Craigslisty kind of thing like that because the independent was such a valuable experience in learning the value of local. So. You know, what can you do local that will also critical mass local? So this started to happen, you know, and um, so clearly it's, it's happened. So I started going to the Star Store to get a loaf of bread, and people started handing me $20 bills. Aww. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they ought to be doing. Well, I, 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 you know, well, this, well plus, plus, this started off, I'm working on two books, this started off as like a, an hour, half hour a day. So now it's more like, it's 10 hours a day because I get up in the morning, I go check my email. I've got all the responses from last night's email to deal with, including, how come I'm off, not on your list? You know, and it's, you know, because like with Walt Whitman, what you find, when, every time I send out a Walt Whitman, because you're all on Walt Whitman, whether you're on Drew's list or not. So guys from Australia and Indonesia and Europe, I got, you know, I got almost 4,000 people to get Walt Whitman. In that, in, in those, there's 1,900 that get Drew's list, right? So, so that, that's my way of catching anybody that falls off. When they get Whitman and they don't get Drew's list, they go, hey, I got Walt, but it reminded me that I'm not getting Drew's list. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of, a, kind of a deal. I don't know where I was going with that, but there you go. People were giving $20 bills at the Star Store. Yeah, well, that was, that was interesting because the time thing was, was, was uh, getting interesting. Uh, so the one book got put on hold, and so I still got to finish that book up, and I'm I'm just now nervous the guy's going to say, okay, we're ready to finish. We only have one little chapter to finish. 
and but that'll take another uh, probably a month of work. And the other book I shipped off to uh, press, it's being published by Chronicle, um, which is a really great publisher, and it's off press now, but we won't get copies until July before they're shipped here. And nobody's sending me an advanced copy right now, which I don't know why. Could be because of my list. <laughs> yes, yes, you. They were not on your list? They're not on my list. Uh, well, <laughs> You're not on theirs. <laughs> um, so, okay, so one of the things I want to know is there is very little editorially put out by you. Mm -hmm. Right? So, in other words, other than a beautiful explanation email this past week, which I thought you did yeah. really well. Yes. Um, and I think people are looking for some of that guidance as far as, you know, I want to give back. How right. do I do that? You know, and you said you give that a lot. You know, other than um, the Jack Johnson plastic bottle video, which was fabulous. But other than that, there's really very little Drew put out there. Yeah. There's Walt. There's a lot more Walt than Drew. So Absolutely. I'm just curious as your, as your perspective on that and why and how. Right. And By the way, i got to tell you uh, an ego story. It's, uh, it's Jack Johnson's latest album. He performed for me over the telephone entirely <laughs> so that I could do his bio for his company's release PR. So that was kind of a thrill. Wow. And I knew him when he was a little guy and very short, but uh, it's an interesting musician. He's an amazing fellow. If you haven't heard uh, uh, Sleeping Through the Static, great Jack Johnson album. Listen to the lyrics. That's profound. But in any case, uh, um, uh, the deal with Drew's List is about well, I didn't know what it was about, but uh, you know, like I say, I had a certain initial aim to it. But uh, aim high, aim, aim high, uh, and aim wide. That's what we did with the independent. The idea with the independent was to create a Trojan horse, and the idea was that if you're going to bring uh, values of sustainability and and uh, and uh, you know environmental sensitivity and you know and, and uh, you know non toxic values into the marketplace, you couldn't do it if you presented yourself <coughs> as an environmental organization because then you end up preaching to the converted. Mm -hmm. So you have to go really wide. So we had Leonard Good talking to kids, and we had Barton Cole doing recipes, and we had Chris Crotty doing video reviews, and we had you know Liam Moriarty doing bicycle columns. We had everything. We had something for everybody. There's a lot of Velcro on it. You could stick to it anywhere. And so that, uh, and then you run the, you, you intersperse the, you know, fairly hardcore environmental pieces, right? But you can introduce them in a way that kind of, come on in. Sorry. We're just Hi. starting to have Where's fun. Where is the greatest? <laughs> can we get in there? Yeah, come on in. I'll wait for you to find a place. Sorry. No worries. Well, I forget what I was saying anyway. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to bring you. Thank you. All right, good to see you. Best, thanks. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so you, so, uh, so you want to give people a chance to listen. And to give people a chance to listen, you've got to go wide and you've got to go kind of non threatening and you can embed your message in that kind of thing. So, that philosophy, this thing, started off really just about building this constituency. And I'm really cautious about putting uh, editorial messages into it because. It's serving a different purpose, mm -hmm. and I try to, uh, you know, I'll run things for the, for the Democratic uh, Party because it's a little, you know, I'm not entirely happy with the Democratic Party, but I'll run their little, they're having the meeting and stuff, and that's really good uh, compared to the other side. You know? But the other side doesn't send me anything; they know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what I realized with the Independent was was that um, was we try to keep it open because I thought we're going to have everybody in here. And we even uh, seeded in a few conservative profiles in the beginning of the thing. But conservatives are called conservative because, not because they're conservative in the sense that, you know, John Muir would understand conservative. They're conservative in the way that your uncle won't tell you how much money he makes, right? He just stated that close to the chest, you know, they play their cards closely held. So conservatives aren't going to send articles into a publication and expose themselves by nature unless they're radical conservatives. That's why the only people you hear from in the conservative party are the radicals, because the other ones are too conservative to even speak. <laughs> really, it's kind of in the nature of being a conservative, having those tendencies. You're not, you're not about full disclosure or about you know expressing yourself or anything like that. You're kind of 
inclined to just keep it, keep it, keep it private, keep it in your home. And um, so things will tend to, you know, the expressions will tend to kind of go in that way, I think. But um, there is a plan. Yeah, so. <laughs> but it's not I really, keep hearing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's got to get done. And the problem with the plan is you can't get out of your own way to do the plan. So, so right now, there is a, there is a tendency towards um, Drew, what Drew's List needs is uh, some um, uh, simplification. I mean, people, they don't know this. I get essays that are, you know, would you run this for me? <laughs> you know, I don't have a screen big enough to see what you're giving me. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. So, so maybe a template or something. Exactly, you know? a template. And so how to deliver a template, you can give words to people, but I found out... But is, is, isn't every truth list the template? you think so. Mm -hmm. In a sense, you, there so. you get the idea. After I get through, right. yeah, you, you think, you think. I mean, there's, there's, <laughs> things are obvious or they're not obvious. So, um, so be, <laughs> but, but there's other things too. I, I'll get uh, fairly frequent requests. This is part of my morning two or three hours is like, Hey, I missed, there was a housing report the other day. I had a cute little cottage and I discarded it. Mm -hmm. So I have to go, I look and find, I, uh, customer oh. service oriented. Oh, if you wow. ask for it, I give it to you. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like really stupid that way. <laughs> <laughs> but I just do it. And so you get it. If you want it, you get it. And I make, I don't even really curse that much anymore. I just deliver it. <laughs> and, uh, but you have those interns, right? <laughs> All of them. I haven't had any help yet, but uh, <laughs> I do. My, my big help. My wife brings me the best cup of coffee in the world oh. every morning. Yeah. It is the best. That they're been. I've been to all of the other coffee shops in the planet. On the planet. They're all not as good as my wife's coffee, so it's fantastic. Um, but, um... No. Uh, usually the Sumatra, uh, Costa Rica blend. So your, your morning two or three hours is spent yeah, customer service. service. Yeah, customer service kind of stuff and cleaning up the list and all that kind of stuff. And then all day long stuff comes in. And as it comes in, there's two ways to do it. You can lose it or you can file it. So I, <laughs> <laughs> so I tried the other way first. <laughs> and, and I was very successful at that method. <laughs> I really didn't post my celery socks for sale. So I, was like, so I got really hip to the idea that filing get in the file and then so, so gradually I figured out how to file a little bit better and as a writer and editor I know now that uh, writing 95% plus add how many numbers you want to that is filing mm -hmm. you read a novel it's just all it is is a filing system it's like everything is filing so it becomes more and more important the more I've edited the more I understand that, uh, that it's all about filing so so my list runs better now with more people in it because I've learned how to file better and I'm, I've got very religious about my filing. When stuff comes in, I deal with it right away, file. Problem like a, that is, life I can't lessons. do anything else. So, life lessons of Drew's list. Life things lessons. happen, deal with it right away. Yeah, that's, file a, that's a good file one. It. <laughs> file it. File it. <laughs> Something happens, file it. <laughs> but then, but see, what we did, this, we couldn't do this stuff a few years ago because uh, now, I, now my computer, if I look for you know, the name, uh, you know, Dr. Craig, I can get every hit yeah. of Dr. Craig, I mean, you know, right from that porn site you were on that one time. <laughs> <laughs> no way that you, you know, hey. It's like they all come up and they're all there. So I can find anything on there, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> but I, no, I got a, I got a, a, a nice little uh, filing system and, and the filing mm -hmm. thing has been, a, has been a great deal. But what really, uh, that's just the, sort of the structure of the, of the system. What you start to do when you start to collect um, the, an interactive list of a thousand or more people is you start to see the effects of synergy on the community. Mm -hmm. And you start to notice weird things like, I need a mattress, I've got a mattress. <laughs> no cars for like two weeks, nobody's got wheels. Three cars in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's like this stuff goes on. So you start to, to, mm -hmm. to think about this is where that word quantum comes in. You start mm -hmm. to see you know, yeah. what affects what and where do our impulses that we take as our doing mm -hmm. come from? How, what, you know, how, what, what percentage of our doing is really just happening to us? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, to what extent can we relax about that? To what extent should we panic about that? Mm -hmm. You know, whatever. So, um, yeah, so you start to see uh, a lot of interesting things. When I 
when I was I spoke at the Commons about a month ago, and um, so what did I talk about? You know, how do you get through? You know, speaking to the broad demographic. Well, it hit me that every lost dog in the past year and a half mm -hmm. has been found. Wow. Um, I don't know about the latest dog I'm waiting. I don't know. I haven't heard. I asked the owner, "Tell me when you get the dog." And he don't hear. But but every dog, only one cat. Mark's not here tonight. But it's cat. Sandy's. Oh, your cat got eaten. That's, oh. that's, that's what the psychic call is. If you're listening. Nancy, your psychic? No, no. Another one? Yeah, somebody said. Somebody said, "Well, that cat's gone." Oh, yeah. Yeah, and there's another one out on Saturday. You know, the cats are tough like that. Yeah, yeah. They're tender. Yeah. Mm. You know, the synergism. A good example for me was I was having a conversation with somebody, and we were both disgusted in my neighborhood about throwing styrofoam in the garbage. Next day, April's here, right? Yeah. April puts her pond topper. Is April here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. April's in the back. Where's April? Pond roll? Yeah. Yeah. April. 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 You didn't introduce yourself. April, April. stand up. <laughs> oh, you had no idea. All right. April's the pond, you know, the little green yeah. frog. Yeah. The pond, right. yeah. pond hopper. So we're having this conversation. I'm like, where are we going to throw away styrofoam? And the neighbor says, you know, I drove by Ikea. And they have this place that says we recycle styrofoam. I'm like, well, you know, I get to like right in the belt, like, you know, every other year. And so it's like, she goes all over the place, April. And so boom, 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 within a day, transition would be April, styrofoam, and we're now starting to have this beginning project of recycling styrofoam off the island, out of our dump, into Renton, where they can reuse. So do we have a collection point? We do. Right now, only a transition would be events. That's a plug. Yes. <laughs> which is, which like is actually tomorrow, tomorrow night, night. Right. <laughs> at the Methodist Church. And it's always the first Wednesday of the month. But that's so we also don't overwhelm April. We actually grow it organically, a la Drew, and we begin to accommodate as it grows further, and then we can look at other ways of doing that. But that's a perfect example of there's a want, there's a need, there's an offer, there's a idea and then boom it happens and that's what I've always felt in this community as kind of a person that connects is wait a minute you need you have and you guys don't know each other you know and it's that kind of creating local instead of throwing away reusing mm -hmm. how do we do that better without it just feeling like a garage sale right mm -hmm. you know there's got to be more than a garage sale and a thrift shop to connect people I like I, what I like about Drew's list is uh, I, I moved here in two years in August, and I thought it took me a really long time to find out about Drew's list. But mm -hmm. when I did find, now I realize I didn't find out about it so late after all. It's not that old. But <laughs> it, when I talk with people and tell them about Drew's list, it's like right away they know a whole lot more people on the island than they have, and they might have lived here a lot longer than I have. Mm -hmm. They know more. That's that's the best thing about Drew's list mm -hmm. to me. Is that you? You find out. You find out about people. What's happening to people? What What's needed? I get tired of the art galleries, but what I love is that it's all filed like that. So I don't have to look at the art galleries if I'm not in the mood for art galleries that right. month or year or whatever. So. But I think uh, it's it's wonderful how it connects people. Right. Can I share something? Um, I'm sorry. Drew helped me. I, I started a group called We Beat Women in Business and Men to care enough to show up, and he helped support me in that. And I had 67 people show up. The next mm -hmm. meeting when he helped me was 110 women in a month. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was yeah. a <laughs> 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 you know, and, I, and, I, and, and it's all women. I give everybody 30 seconds to share who they are and what they do as business owners. And then I needed a place to live, and, I, and my water heater broke. And I put in, I need a water heater, too, in small letters. And I had eight people call me for a brand new water heater. <laughs> I just want to say thank you. Okay. That's all. That's all. How many people are willing to admit that the first thing they do when they get up in the morning is look at the free or for sale Yes. <laughs> it's like okay. I mean, you have to get up at two o'clock to get this. Exactly. Oh, so the question is, like, how early is it okay to call? Yeah, some people don't care. Some people don't. They, I, guys still think the three o'clock in the morning. I said, Gee, what should I do if I hold it? Oh my god, you guys. What do I do? You know, so I hold it till six in the morning when I'm sleeping. Oh you know, it's a hard one. Drew, Drew helped me um, with with promoting my account with the island calendars that I make each year. Oh and I I've had people from Ohio and mm -hmm. Mexico who are subscribers to Drew's list by calendars from the <laughs> But that's not local. Say, these people that's say awesome. I'm planning it to happens. move. With the island someday, and you know anybody with a house? It's like so. I start 
sending them names and, and having conversations with them. Oh my god, email. It's going to be really cool. Can't, so, can you, so can you actually go forward to their relatives of what's happening a lot? So can you speak, I'd like you to speak a little bit to your vision of what this localism is about or what is the synergy that you're creating. I mean, there's already community, there's already neighborhood coffee shops, there's God knows how many events for us to gather around here on Slip right. Libby. So what is this bringing or what is your vision of taking in the next step about this vision of creating con greater connection? Right. The, um, what, what I st started to realize was, was that the people are here, the place is here, the people's garages full of stuff are here, their, their hobbies are here, their assets, their lives, everything is all here. And they've all got basically email. And there hasn't been apparently something that would synergize all that without, board, without borders. There's no, that's one reason there's no payment required, there's no um, username, no password, no nothing. There's no, it's, it's completely open. And you can plug into whatever, you can use it and just use it and not do anything for it uh, if you want to according to category. So it's a pretty broad net and it, it sort of casts that out there. And, and um, so that's the basis of something. As uh, one of the things we tried to articulate with the independent that has been articulated for generations before us, and certainly in the in the 1970s, uh, late late 60s and 70s, with the early environmental movement, the crystallization of the environmental movement on a mass scale in the country was that you know we're running out of time, we got to ought, to ought to figure out something, and um, so that's the the independent uh, trying to put that out there that we're running out of time, we ought to figure something out, and we have a very unique, and I hope not, not that unique, but we have a real unique situation here of being on an island. It's really easy to isolate your community and to, mm -hmm. to identify your community, isolate in that sense of identifying the community. And um, it becomes a, it's kind of a, a pretty safe haven for experimentation. Uh, if this area can't solve some problems, then probably it's not going to be good for other areas. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, a lot of people are attracted here, maybe for that, for that sense of opportunity, and certainly for the sense of safety that's here. But we're we're in a shrinking pond, and so and before that pond gets totally shrunk, something has to change about the way the pond functions. So some crystallization in a different direction has to start to manifest. Um, so the idea is the subtext that hasn't been articulated publicly yet for Drew's list is, what do we do when the power goes out? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we've all got our computers now. We can turn on and look at Drew's list. This is like a temporary thing. We're going, we're going down a car, mm -hmm. down the road in our climate controlled cars. We're like, ah, adjust that seat a little bit more. Turn on the radio. Everything's groovy. I you know, smoke a doobie, having a good time. <laughs> We're doing all that and everything's fine, but this has like only been going on for a few years and it probably won't go on for that many more years. We're in this really weird, historic transition point. And it's an opportunity and um, you know how to convert that. So I really don't know how to do that, but if there is a solution, you gotta assume it's here. It's like, that's one thing I learned years ago. It, you know, if, if, if a safe way to solve problems is to assume the solution's in the room. If you think the solution is not in the room, stuff gets unsolved. But if you think it's in the room, most of the time you find the solution. So if we assume that the solution to our regional, or I call it uh, micro-local uh, region, if our solutions are here, then the possibility exists that we'll find them. So we have to start uh, having a sense of ourselves as being able to kind of find everything we need here. And, or if not here, maybe here in our friendly islands around us or you know in our northwest or whatever it is. So it just it's a it's a relativistic idea of local. It goes from you know real sense of local to to our regional localism. But definitely, you know, getting avocados from Chile is it's probably not going to be something we're going to be doing in fifty years from now. So how think. does Drew's list um, thinking forward, how how can how can we use Drew's list to make those kinds of things happen? If we look at it as what it is now, which is a wonderful thing, right? 
but if we if 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 we if we remain in those files over here, those categories that we have now, that's likely not to happen, right? If we're advertising, publicizing. Well, it could be. Um, how do we? How do we? And would you allow? How how would you allow something else to happen with that? Yeah. Well, it, it, in a sense, you, the, the word "allow" is the key one there. Yeah, uh, I know. We we allow things to follow their course in the sense that you know I don't have you know I'm not going to direct this, or, and, you know, even Craig is not going to direct this, like it's going to just, it's going <laughs> to unfold, so it's an unfolding, so it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a, uh, uh, a synergistic -y kind of thing that's going to happen here, if it's going to happen, there's no guarantee, so what's going to happen, first of all, is that's the twin hull canoe, is we're going to start a website, and the website will handle some of my problems, it'll, it'll allow those guys that send me the essays to be boiled down to this much text, Read more, go to my website. It'll be over there. It won't change the method of delivery. You're still going to be encumbered with this, this forced engagement. People ask me, how about if uh, I just get wheels and housing report? I don't want the rest. <laughs> you're on the boat or you're off the boat. <laughs> you get it all. Somebody else asked me, asked me the other day, going to the other extreme, can't you just put all this in one email? No. Well, the, people in, you know, the people on dial-up in Green Bank aren't going to really relate to that one. So. But also because it, it does allow you to sort through and, and be selective on, on that level. So we're going to start a website. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to, in fact, there may be somebody in the room that's going to help me with this. I just have a feeling. And we're going to start, um, on the website, we're going to have overflow so that we can make the delivery of Drew's List a bit more elegant and user-friendly. Then we're going to also, with that, now we're going to have instantaneously almost, um, an archive. So when they, you know, when you, when you can see the housing reports from the last three months and see what's in, I want to price my house, I can go compare it and do that, those my comps and stuff like that. Then the other thing I can do uh, with that is I hope we can have this capability fairly soon and that's a calendar. Put all these events and all this stuff on a calendar. So you have a very functional website. And now the other thing the website's going to do for me is it's going to be a point of entry for people. Automatic sign up. I want how many people ask me? How do you I get can't it? figure out how to sign yeah. up for that Drew's list. I Google forget. it. I look everywhere. Where is it? Drew's list. It would be not public, right? Yeah, you really, you have to but work that's not to get on Drew's list. Yeah. Drew's list. It would be com. That's an email address. Yeah. Email. There's no, there's oh, no. It's not easy, it really ah. isn't. Okay, thank you. Thank Anybody you. wants a card, you can pass it around if you want to. That's, That's all you need to know right there. What do you think if you have on your web a way that all of Drew's list can talk to each other, like a blog or something newer than a no. blog? Could be. You really want more communication? No. Well, I don't know. Maybe. So, no. you can, so yeah, so we. Because if you want to take it to another level, then it's like people of like mind can. Instead of just answering an ad sure. or answering, uh, you know, something for sale, there's a lot of interaction. Okay. I've met people that way. Sure. You can, well, you can do that now when people respond to you. Right. You can email them back, and then right. you have that going on. So right. and I don't want to have you already taken up www.drewchat.com? You know, have like a Drew chat. There's a lot of Drew this and Drew that's on the internet. So what I did, my URL is uh, www.drewslist-weebie.com mm -hmm. because there's Drew's List other places that they're not doing this. But it's some guy named Drew who's going on a list. <laughs> so, so then, so then you got that. So you got those three major functions that are happening on the website, and then of course that allows us to do uh, advertising. But rather than advertising, I'm thinking about going more towards like directory listings that are a bit more ongoing, functionally oriented, not so much direct sales oriented. Mm -hmm. Give them the idea of this is a more of a functional directory. And people will pay something. Keep it really nominal so that. It's it's not going to hurt businesses, but it creates a quid pro quo. It's a symbiosis kind of thing. And then, potentially, in the upper right-hand corner of every page, there's a little block this big. It looks like another ad, but it says Island Independent on it. Mm -hmm. There we are, back home again. Mm -hmm. So that's that's where we're going if we can if we can get there. Um, but for now, and that answers your question about editorial writing and stuff like that. Right now, we just have to hear from uh, you know Meteor Man. We comes out of the hole, and uh, mm -hmm. but it, but having having uh, also on the web the ability to make your submissions, you know, what what you're offering for sale or mm -hmm. your event, will have a format for listing those things, so it automatically limits the amount of wording mm -hmm. you're allocated. Mm -hmm. You can attach them that can go onto the website, your PDFs mm -hmm. and your big documents that you know if somebody wants to look at them, they can. But we're not all going to be encumbered with those things. So there's a lot of efficiencies that come in there. 
But right now, I'm the army. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, taking where she left off then, and where you said in a place that we're not electronically dependent. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's go there for a moment. Yes, sir. How does this synergize um, localism and local connection, person to person connection, in a way that takes that beyond where it is right now? Can you speak right. to that? Sure. So, so the deal now is I realize that, that every encounter that Drusilis facilitates, be it going to Wicca or be it, you know, going to somebody's house or to hiring a acquire gardener. a lamb or hiring a gardener, those are all that's all relationship building. So that's the subtext of this thing that's off the off the radar is it's all about building these relationships. It's like every day this launches X number of relationships just because it's exchanging information. So it's it's synergizing this this community in this way. Um, but there's the, looking. I've looked ahead on this one. I mean, there's a kind of a strategy out there too. But um, next uh, this month, coming up here on the 17th of June, there's a guy coming to town, Dave Ewart, e Ewalt, Ewalt, coming from Arizona. He used to live up here, and in fact, he ran for office up in Bellingham some years ago. And uh, he's going to some event up in um, on San Juan Island on the 18th of June. On the 17th. He'll be at the cons. And his specialty over the last 30, 40 years is he goes to communities and he brings together all these great groups that are not synergized. Mm -hmm. And he talks to them about how they can create a, a whole lot of all these great parts. So Drusilis' first, first sponsored seminar is this guy <laughs> who's coming to the commons the 17th. And I haven't put this out to the list yet because my, I realized I, I should, because there's only 25 seats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I realized I should try to get certain people there. It would be kind of good. So I've got somebody from Whitby Institute. I've got Helen Price Johnson. I've got somebody from Langley Government. I've got somebody from the EDC. Transition Whitby. Got some, trans, transition Whitby. So, and then whatever, uh, and then hopefully, and I think, I'm, you know, there'll be about a dozen of those kind of people there. And then on Thursday, I'm going to send out, this Thursday, I'm going to send out a and open up the rest and sell out the rest of it, I hope, for this guy. And uh, he seems like he could be the real deal, but I don't know if he's the real deal, because I haven't met him yet. I've talked to him on the phone. I've researched him a bit to see who this guy is. But it's a right step, consciousness-wise, in that direction, getting somebody to do this, because that's what need, it needs to happen to me. It's like you've got to get rid of the gatekeepers for a while and get this broader conversation going. Because the, the sands in the little hourglass are really few, I think now. They're getting few. And rather than just panic, <laughs> which is always available, <laughs> is, is, is try, to, uh, try to take it as an experimental opportunity to see, geez, can we make it across the tracks before the train comes to the crossroad? <laughs> I think we're going to, I think, in, by what I've learned in life is that, is that Everything, I, everything happens at the last possible moment. Mm -hmm. Ever notice that? Everything, <laughs> everything happens at the last possible moment. Is that, is that the <laughs> yeah, and, and it's all and, and, and so many. It's always. You ever have those things where you really have a lot of time to plan ahead? <laughs> you plan, you plan, you plan. Yeah. Still. Does it really matter? Is it not still no. down to the? You're still racing for the crosswalk, you know. So I think that's how it's going to be for us. And. Uh, <laughs> There was a great, uh, there was a great Jesuit philosopher, uh, Tyler de Chardin, who talked about the newest sphere. He, he described a lot of this stuff back in the 50s. He was actually a Jesuit working in China. But he said something that I, I picked up a book when I was in first year of college by him. And I opened it up, and for some reason, I just remembered this quote. And it said, an outlet appears at the peak of time not only for our hope of escape, but for our expectation of revelation. So, <clears throat> it always gets me. So an outlet appears at the peak of time, not only for our hope of escape, but for our expectation of revelation. You know, what a, a supreme optimism, and maybe a fact. So, I've always banked on the fact of that. So, so this is about that. But that's all subtext. On the other hand, it's about, <clears throat> I've got a new water heater if you want. It's <laughs> 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 six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so I'm, I'm intrigued by the independent. 
because I think, although I wasn't here then, that what we're going through, Fidalgo's going through, what, we're, what Fidalgo's going through, San Juan's going through, or, and there's no learning, sh or there's minimal learning, sharing, and everybody's reinventing the wheel and going through their same local All right, you are. thing. Um, so, do you? How do you see Drew's list phenomenon-like process right. happening to synergize where islands can start to share and say, "Okay, we're doing this. We learned from this one." This. <clears throat> so, can you speak to that? Yes, totally. The way the I independent came into um, uh, reality, it came into being. Uh, I went to the uh, the uh, Island County Fair. Went to the Island County Fair. And uh, I rode the Ferris wheel. And you know how they stop you at the top of the Ferris wheel? Boom, boom, you sit there and look, 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 you look down and you see a thing. And, and I looked out and I saw Camino Island. I thought, well, what's that? I've been there for like three, three months, whatever it is. June, I moved here in June. July, August. So two months, I've been here two months. I looked out, what's that? You know? And I saw something on a map over there, you know? And I, I, when I moved here, uh, Two months earlier, I had a really good job with the clothing company Patagonia, mm -hmm. and I managed to design my job. We moved to Whidbey Island, came here quickly, got it a farmhouse, you know, blah blah blah. And um, right about the time we took out the last window, <laughs> I got a call from Patagonia. We had trouble in Ventura, <laughs> and they were going through a, a problem with their bank, and uh, they ended up, ended up needing to lay off 160 employees. Mm -hmm. 520 You're and I'd really set up my department well yeah. so yeah so I was out of a job in the Northwest with a gutted farmhouse and I thought wow I'm out of commuting <laughs> so I was up at the top of the Ferris wheel and I saw this <laughs> 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 it all comes no no I didn't want to jump <laughs> I had an aunt who, like, who really couldn't go to Niagara Falls because she wanted to jump but uh, that was not enough. and uh, so, um, so I asked somebody when I got down, you know, what, 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 I was curious, I saw that, what is that, what's that island? What is Camino Island? You been there? No. <laughs> um, so then I learned that Camino Island was part of Island County. And I did a survey and formally I found that the average Whidbey Island citizen has been to Camino Island 0.8 times. <laughs> so, so that's, that's interesting. You have not, I mean, what if they want to go to the courthouse? They, well, they have to drive through a, a county or two to get there, you know? It's like, Weird, you know, do you have a, a boat that goes across? Just, no, no. <laughs> That's kind of weird. And I thought, well, what have I done? Well, I, I've been a magazine editor since uh, I started, I was the editor of Surfer starting in 1968, so I got along, uh, and I've been the editor of several magazines over the course of those times, international, you know, action sports magazines. And so um, I said, well, that's something I can do and I can use. This place seems to need something. And... Um, Later on, when I started this well, you thing... you could have built a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's 600 foot deep, by the way. That's true, it's a long yeah. way. Okay. You're not doing a bridge here. The only place to do a bridge is off of, uh, oscillating off of uh, Camino, okay. right into Cookville. Now, they could do one there, but they're not going to do it. So, so um, but I could do a publication, and um, and when I thought about it, that, that was the deal. It's like, we could look at, the, the slogan for the publication was breaking the sound barrier. Oh. And it was, we're connected by water, not divided by water, right? That was, you know, the, you know the, the eyes, the, the stairs are going that way. No, the stairs are going that way. And uh, and that turned out to be just absolutely fantastic. And did just what you said because the sustainability group on South Whidbey found out that there was a sustainability group on San Juan. Oh. They didn't even know about it. And so all this resonance and synchronicity helped. And, and literally, shy of a. Um, we went up and interviewed, I think, five or six individuals to take over our advertising for that northern area. And they all, they don't, we left them all nodding, honest to God, loaded up with all they needed, you know, and they just went away. It was not to be. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me why. So I went off doing books and stuff like that. And that thing died after three years to the day. We started on April Fool's Day, and we stopped the day before April Fool's Day. <coughs> so um, what, what, what this, so this approach to that, which still remains the vision because my understanding with that point was that as the world was moving towards globalization and homogenization, that the last bastion of any individuality was going to be bioregionalism. Mm -hmm. It's still a place you feel like you live when you describe it to somebody. I'm in the San Joaquin Valley. I'm in the you know I'm in 
the Puget Sound area. I mean, you know, so that, that we, we can relate to that. It's big enough that you can contemplate it being a sustainable entity, but it's small enough that it feels local. So it's, it's much bigger than our micro-local Drew's List, but with the way to get there is in, it's think about the world could be reconfigured in molecules of bioregionalism, and I, I, to me it always makes me think of Greek city-states, where you know you have Athens and you have Sparta and stuff, and between them is kind of like a no man's land or anybody mm -hmm. could be out there, it's kind of like open space, ooh, idea. And um, so something configured like that. So, so I called my friend, a friend of mine who will go nameless at this point, I said, uh, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> he lives in Coopville. I said, why don't you start a list up there? Right? You start a list up there. Then I called my other buddy over at Port Towns. I said, Jason, why don't you start a list over here? But that's his real list. Maybe not. <laughs> and um, the idea being that if they started a list there and there, mm -hmm. then they would then build it up to a certain point, go to a website, which would look just like our website. There would be a sort of quasi-affinity deal on the website level. And up in the upper right-hand corner of each of their pages, it would say, Island Independent. So now we have feeding from these different cells of the same concept. That's not limited by a regionally or micro region, regionally. That's expandable into its own universe. That, and the thing about that Island Independent, right there, up in the upper right hand corner of your website, right there, is that it can start with a single paragraph. Mm -hmm. it, well, it just starts with a sentence that says, here, it's here by launch, you know? So it's, uh, it's you know, even if you have the idea eventually, which I do, of doing it in paper, um, it does get it going. And I know that as soon as that door is open, there will be a flood of stuff, which is why I would need to replace myself doing what I'm doing before that can start. Right. So this is there's there's a few needs to jump over, and um, but so that's that's how that but that's that's how that templates out, and then that can go anywhere. I mean, that, so so you can see that going to Orcas and, and uh, San Juan Island and to uh, and to um, you know Fidalgo and, and wherever Vancouver Island, it could be whatever, and they could go they could go wherever it wants to go. But that's allowing again, back to allowing. You see where it wants to go. You see where it, you know what the because you, you can't make people do this kind of stuff. They just have to do it. Come on in, <laughs> front row if you want, right here. Thank you. Drew, are you looking for someone to help you with the website? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, sometimes it's just easier to to do it your own self. Uh, I'll let you know. Because yes, you could put that out on Drew's list. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have I said that? Yes. <laughs> I, so, I think what I meant by allow is that what happens if someone sends you something that doesn't have anything to do with an event or for sale or an art gallery or anything like that, but it's something they want to share with the community? Mm -hmm. What do you there is precedent. Has that happened yeah. to you? Okay. Yes, and there is precedent on that. There, we've, I've run a number of those kind of things over, it's, you know, the density of that versus the other stuff is not high. But part of the reason is that is I think I'm still in a preliminary phase. Uh, and I think that the, I, like if I thought the list, you know, it teetered at a thousand, and it's clearly going to hit two thousand really quick. And I think that now, it's re realistically, it's probably more like a three thousand list in Green Bank South, which is, See, it represents, and people say, why don't you expand this, go north or you know, expand the area? But it, it, that's not what it is. Yeah, it's micro-local. Right. So by definition, the idea then is become the model, the idea becomes to, to do this model really well and then make it available to anybody else, anywhere else who wants to try this. So we can give you a template. So I'm talking to my paraplegic brother in Glendale, California. I'm saying, you know, adopt a zip code. Uh, adopt to your, you got, you, all, you live in this upper Glendale kind of area here. That's kind of like a islandy community place. Do it there, you know, and uh, you're not doing anything else. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, 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 uh, so, so, so the idea is then to create a, temp create a template uh, for reproducibility. Mm -hmm. And then to model it sufficiently, though, before doing that so that it's actually inspirational as well as. Mm -hmm. Reproducible. 
So if we can do it right here and really make something happen out of it and it can really become an active, juicy thing, then other people are going to, it's going to have sex appeal, it's going to have what Gurdjieff called Fa 96, man, it's going to make you want to buy in. Mm -hmm. So you want to do it in your town. I think what, well, I think what, I'm sorry. Uh, you see the link then is the independent. Yeah, the independent is the link between all these. Could be, islands. yeah. Yeah, exactly. It could be. It could be. It, it, again, if it, it wants to happen, if it, if it goes that way. Mm -hmm. But it needs somebody, it needs other people who are going to do what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. If there's no, other people going to do what I'm going to do. Somebody else in, uh, right. in North Bend, if that's the exactly. island you're looking at, exactly. take on that island. Exactly. North Bend, you mean in Oregon there? No, I'm thinking of North Bend, Washington. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're kind of like an island, too. In a way. Yeah, exactly. So you, well, could, you, could, you could do it anywhere. And... Uh, mm -hmm. And you could, you know, you don't necessarily have to connect to a larger idea too, but you could. Mm -hmm. And if we provided the template, it would suggest that. Yeah. I think one of the most beautiful things too is you provided so much value that you literally, in this economy, if you told people you do this, they might not believe you. But you have people literally wanting to hand you money, like, please make this a subscriber. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let let us pay you live. Mm -hmm. And and that energetic of providing something that's so wanted and needed and of so much service, um, I think is just fabulous, and that's why you're hitting the strides of growth that you're hitting. Right. Um, but again, we, we we tried to with the independent. We tried uh, that was the solution. People said, uh, "Can I got charge for this thing?" So we we charge. We we went from uh, for the last three issues. So how long it lasted. <laughs> and again, we did we did 72 free issues. And the last three issues, we went to monthly instead of bi-weekly, and we charged a dollar. <laughs> it doesn't matter what the amount is. It's just the psychology of having free. Having a free, having it open. Keep it open. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. And people are like, I, I encounter every day people who are selling stuff to buy food. Yeah. And that's the reality. People who got to pay the rent, and they're they're letting their you know they're selling their kids bicycle to pay the rent, right? So, um, I don't want that money. Mm -hmm. I don't at all want that money. Mm -hmm. So that, those are our friends and neighbors. Probably some in this room. <laughs> Me. That's <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> you have seventy six. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you don't have a bike anymore. That you decide not to run. Huh? Huh? You get submissions that uh, yeah don't uh, run. yeah sometimes some of these things that are not uh, uh, functional information that are somebody's uh, opinions or they're too political mm -hmm. or something like that or bamboo I did have a thing on the bamboo I, our <laughs> friend said you know bamboo is one of the most noxious invasives around and and I didn't want to post that thing on bamboo I'm mm -hmm. sorry to say <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah so I'll make certain editorial decisions. Uh, absolutely, and it, you know, I tend to not feel good about not running certain things. But and there's a, and there's a few people that are said by other people not to be on the on the up and up, maybe and stuff like that. But you know, it's a bit of a crapshoot. Has that percentage grown with the volume? Of not really. No, it's it's really it's one of the most amazing things about it is uh, there is a sense of integrity about it and about the clientele. And about, uh, it gives you, a, because it's all, I, there's no marketing in this. Everybody who's come to me has been either told, I, I should sign up for your list. And even if somebody tells me to sign up, put Larry on my list. I don't. I, I email Larry and I say, Larry, Joe says you should be on my list. There's the street about my list, read that. And then you tell me if you want to be on the list and I'll put you on. So there's nobody who's not vetted. Because of that, we'd be Telecom, who now has their Thank logo you. at the bottom of my page. The reason they have the logo there is not giving me any money, but they they know that this list is 100% solid, that there's nobody spammed on this list. And so they've given me a larger uh, allocation for del for delivery of email than anybody else in their system. So that George Henney, uh, their, their uh, sister, uh, Julia, have been really gracious in uh, letting their tech people do that for me. We wouldn't be here otherwise. We'd get like one email a day would be the limit. What, um, give us a story that surprised you, moved you, inspired you, touched you. This <laughs> it's not so it's not so uh, like not like the lost and found puppies. Those are always good. But uh, <laughs> but uh, one, one, of the, one of the classics. I mentioned this at the, at the 
the comments was, uh, I got a call at dinner time one evening, and uh, or an email, no, it was an email. And I got an email at dinner time, and it was uh, this woman who works for um, uh, one of the construction outfits on the island. And it just came to her attention that, that uh, I think it was uh, Thursday, that on Monday they're going to be tearing down this house. And, uh, and the owner just advised them that if anybody wanted anything off the house, they could come and get it. So that night, at around 2 in the morning, I launched uh, you know, on my uh, you know, free, for, want, you know, for sale, wanted a free deal. I said, you know, there's this house and blah, blah, blah. So at 11 o'clock, the, uh, the next morning, I get an email from this woman. She said, I can't believe it. She said, I got here at 8 o'clock in the morning, the house was, all the windows were gone, the doors were gone. She said, I had a stack of email, I had a stack of phone messages, and I'd already had, you know, continual phone calls. In fact, this is the first time I could talk to you since then. So, it was a, it was um, such a great example of something. Well, recycling. No one wants the waste. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it's whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that kind of, that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, the other one I like. The other one I like is uh, is uh, these people uh, say, "Hey, we moved here from Minnesota or somewhere, and we oh, we love to play euchre." Michigan, and, Michigan, and uh, and uh, and she said, "But we can't find anybody who knows how to play this thing, you know? Can, can we? Can you post a book?" And so I post a little thing. It's like a, you know, a couple wants to get some people play eager with her. And you're you're in your thing. So about three weeks, a month later, I get an email. I says, "Hey, we just we just had our first Euchre Club meeting, and we took up a collection for Drew's List, and we're going to be meeting every blah blah blah. And so now they've expanded. Now there's two Euchre groups going." So that's good stuff. It's, that's yeah, it's really awesome. So it's it's uh it's kind of there's nothing better than that in a way. It's really very cool. So it's just taking what's already there and it's, there's nothing new in it. It's just synergizing what exists. And so it feels another category that I think is very powerful that I've seen a shift is the rideshare category. Yeah. So it just oh, yeah. I mean number one I've heard it mentioned many times the post and there is some things happening. Rideshare on the island does exist. Um, and you know it's like a time this time has come but what I like now is n not just I'm looking for a ride yeah. mm -hmm. but it's shifted now <laughs> I'm going to Portland mm -hmm. anybody want to go with me so it feels like it's crossed it's the 60s again yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 it's a road trip <laughs> but, but there is it's, it's like um, and there is an energetic of authenticity even yeah. when people are promoting their own businesses yeah be it a practitioner, be it a business, it's almost like it's. Hey, hey, hey. make yourself at home. Hey. Pull up a cot. Pull up a cot. Oh, oh, seven thirty. <laughs> <laughs> hey. hey. Hi. So it, I think it's almost the way marketing has to be done on Wibby. In other words, you can bring other ideas, but if it doesn't quickly get authentic and and genuine. It kind of falls flat, and then I think that that energetic is there. Can you speak to that a little bit? Well, uh, yeah, it's good. Cool. Well, for new businesses, I try to you know, when somebody comes in, they got a new business. I give them, I give them one thing, and I've got this new thing called job services and help. It's good. And I kind of put that's where I kind of put the new businesses. I figure they get right. one shot to introduce themselves to the community. Right. Then they come back and, and get specific later on if they have something. Um, so, uh, what's your question? <laughs> <laughs> um, authenticity in marketing and businesses. Authenticity. Well, you know, uh, I mean, you don't get a lot of shiny, you know, advertising, right. pre-made ad yeah, no, things. I, yeah, I wouldn't take it. Yeah, so those would be examples of things I would turn away uh, a little. I could I borderline on that. In fact, one of the one of the borderline thing was the, our own chamber of commerce for the Island County Chamber of Commerce, basically in announcing its own demise. <laughs> Posted a uh, an announcement. Uh, they were looking for what was it? They were some contest they were running or something. And I almost didn't run it, but seeing as how they were going out of business, <laughs> I, I ran it. But it was kind of odd. So there's just a sense of that. That, that that's where the problem might be in uh, cloning the concept. Is is you sort of? I mean, I recommend that the, um, the job description for somebody doing this is is maybe somebody who's been an editor. You know, I think that puts you in the mode of having to discriminate between, you know, all kinds of stuff. And then, 
And as an editor, you're always working with uh, trying to make something um, palatable, interesting, without lying. You don't want to, you know, and, and, and you don't want to give the author more, you know, more than 20 points IQ more than he's got. And that's really a challenge because uh, it's, a, it's, it's an issue because whatever you edit for somebody becomes part of their resume going forward. So if you make a guy too smart, he can't replicate that ever again. You've kind of uh, mis missold somebody. How about um, limits? Some businesses or things tend to be on more times than others. Is that a request? Is that a, do you have limits? How, how do you decide that? That's a that's a good one. You Somebody know, asked uh, me that, and I said I have no idea. How yeah, to, uh, to some degree, it's like um, if, if you if you ask for it, you get it pretty much. I, I'll try to deliver the service, but there's a sense I'll say, uh, I just ran something, so I'm not going to ask me in a week. Um, it'll be that kind of a thing. And it's also what they're offering and what it's uh, what I think is the value of the community. <coughs> point. Also, if they're a struggling business, but I think they're worthy, then I figure they deserve a little bit more of a push if I can give it to them. The worst thing people can trash it; it's no big deal. So it's, it's it, but it's a lot of it's just based on uh, just a sense. So I can't. Uh, I don't think I can be specific about that. Well, it's interesting because I was on the Freeland Chamber for years and. Part of the problem I had was when a business went out of business, mm -hmm. what could we have done? I mean, there was that balance between if we knew that they needed help, then we could have come. But on the other hand, it's a demise of a business to say we're in trouble and need help yeah. sometimes. Yeah. So it was that balance of how do you do that? How do you offer that that reach of support to a right. business? So that's, that's what, Yeah, I would say that one of the worst things about our culture is how we tolerate failure. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I keep... Uh, a friend, Bruce Dearborn, uh, studied the Basque system, the Mondragon system, and the financial system. And as I understand their system, it's like they, okay, here we are, we're a bunch of Basques, and we have a bunch of kids and a bunch of old people, and the idea is we're all going to float. And, okay, Johnny, do you want to open a liquor store? You can't, because we've already got one. But maybe a shoe store, you know. They try to look at the thing holistically and ensure that none of the members of their community are going to fail. Mm -hmm. But here, we have this, we raise this competition thing to this mm -hmm. thing. So every time a business fails, it leaks uh, uh, waste mm -hmm. into our community. We can't afford it. But we have this idea that failure is just part of it. So if 99 people fail so that one can succeed, that's that's just the, you know, the cream rises to the crop, whatever, the top rate. Yeah, but, it, but it's not. It's uh, Every time somebody fails, we eat all that waste. Mm -hmm. And that's what's done the society in. That eating that waste, we can't. We're just waste oriented. We think we can. We have infinite resources, and including the capacity to waste. I agree with you, Craig, that about the businesses. Sometimes you, just in the short time I've been here, a business goes under, and I think if I'd known that, I could have instead of spending this amount of money here, I could spend that same amount of money in three places and keep three businesses going. And sometimes it's just easier to go to the one place that you're used to going to, mm -hmm. and. So, so, I mean, I'm not saying that that's a, something Jerusalem needs to handle, but it, it, it would be nice to, if we knew a little bit more about what's going on in, in the community in that way, I think we could save some of our businesses. But I think Jerusalem really just speaks to it's just the heart of the community. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, really, it's a representation of what we're trying to do to be sustainable, local, support each other, and it's just, it's the voice of it. It's just really, it's all it is, it's just us. It's all it is. So, yes. Do you, um, hi. do you, hi, um, are you on the list? I am on the list. What's your name? Aaron. Aaron, hi. Which Aaron are you? Aaron Everett. Everett, okay. Yeah. I'll try that one. Kind of a newbie. Don't you wish people had name tags around the uh, app? Yeah, you can't. My eyes are so bad. Their email really address on the list. Really it's really great. Thank you so Thank you. much, Mark. Can you say that it's a comprehensive, does it encompass um, all the events from the three papers? No. I don't, I, don't, I don't even read the papers. Okay. I have no idea. I don't have time to read the papers. I, I get all the uh, all I get all the news I get, and uh, and then when I get it, I pass it on. Sometimes I think I get aware of things uh, through other sources, but usually my computer delivers the information from people, organizations, stuff like that. Uh, if people don't post it to me, they probably aren't going to get listed on Drew's list. Okay. So you need to know that more organizations are working me into their you know media stuff. Yeah. Means I have mm -hmm. more hours. Yeah. <laughs> and then a second question, Drew, is what would make your life easier? 
That's a good question. I won't tell you the first time. <laughs> I'm here. Um, um, I, I think I think uh, I've got some uh, wonderful offers of assistance to get the website going, and I think the, the what the website offers, and my my caution on the website is that it can't take away anything positive that's delivered right now. It has to have the same look and feel. It has to complement the, the the way the, the list now, not take away anything from it. Uh, but I think that's got the um, the promise of the efficiencies that will make it really a lot easier, and then make the next couple of steps possible. So that's kind of the deal right now. And I've got I've got a, a really uh, kind offer of some help on the on the uh, from a couple of guys on the on the website. I appreciate PayPal. That has made a big Isn't difference. Great? That is so it's such an easier way to handle it. that. It's fantastic. I've been I, I uh, sell the occasional article and stuff around the, you know, overseas, and uh, uh, it used to be and the banks take chunks, chunks, chunks every step of the way, and you can't get here directly from Whitby. So, uh, <laughs> but PayPal charges almost nothing or nothing, and you get it instantaneously and for you know, relatively small amount of delivery. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's I also appreciate good. that you put a mailing address for those people that were resistant to using PayPal and it allowed for that free delivery as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yes? Any other questions? We've got a few more minutes. Yes, Joe. Towards the beginning of this dialogue, you, you mentioned that you're trying to wrap your head around social media. And I'm curious, as you speak to the idea of, of relaunching the independent as a website and eventually a paper, how that ties in with kind of the ever-growing force of social media. I've heard from a number of um, web developers that simply having a static website isn't even relevant anymore. You have to have a blog. And actually, even these days, I, I remember seeing the cover of Wired saying "blog the web is dead," and then the next thing was "blogs are dead," <laughs> and that that basically social media, aka Facebook and Twitter, if if you aren't on there, you don't exist. At least over in America. Here, I think it's more slow growing. But I'm just wondering what your take is on that and how that integrates. Right. Good question. Yeah. So, so my sense of that is that uh, is that. Electricity is transient, and uh, that the whole the grid's pretty transient, and that the whole system's kind of pretty transient. So, my my kind of philosophy, and this is make hay while the sun shines. What's the best way to get uh, a lot of people on the same page at the same time? We go off on Twitter, and, and um, you know, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem to me to have the. I know what the problem. The problem is how do we engage the kids, or you know, anybody under forty. And uh, um, I don't know. Paper might do that. Paper is going to be kind of like Levi's. Yeah. <laughs> you know, might, uh, it might uh, newsprint. Newsprint might have something that will keep going. You know, on a certain level, even while the big newspaper. I think the the demise of the larger newspapers is uh, <coughs> opens a niche for this kind of thing for micro, local, or local or regional. You know. You know, I think the Seattle Weekly is probably doing pretty good, and I think uh, Stranger's probably doing pretty good. And they're not the same kind of thing, but they exist in kind of a referential environment. So I don't know. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I don't trust those media because they're they're too personal. But on the other hand, to get people out onto the square and Iran and you know to mobilize the Libyans and stuff is fantastic. You know, social tool. So uh, at some point, I would I would. Whatever my technical partners turn out to be in this that part of the endeavor, it's going to be their decision, not mine. I won't know much about it. I'll be too old. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's interesting. You say that 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 maybe it's the paper that will rise above, and I think maybe you're right in in the long run. But I just read a stat that was published over the weekend by um, Huff Post that um, that sixty percent of people under 30 get all of their news on their phone, like read all of their news articles on their phone and they don't pick up a newspaper, and 40% and of people over 40 read the news only on their phone. So it was an interesting trend. Yeah, I'm not talking about news though. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking about a different kind of media where the content's a little bit different. So the Island Independent, what we did is we did have a double page, uh, or sometimes three pages, uh, of a, a collation of regional news where you could get the most important story or two 
from San Juan, from Orcas and stuff. And so in a very digested form, that was at the front of the book, in front of the 32-page uh, newspaper. So you got that right up front, and you could read it and go over your coffee. It was perfect, perfect to do that. It wasn't extensive. Then the rest of it was features that were focused on, you know, profiles of people or, you know, talking about different different things about uh, our area here. You know, talking with the ferry captain or whatever the deal was. So they had uh, a different kind of, you know, more magazine sort of a quality to them. And that magazine thing, you know, I mean, I still subscribe to Rolling Stone. I think a lot of that, their subs have been going pretty steadily up, and that's kind of bucking the trend. And uh, New Yorker, I think the New Yorker has, we used to be called, the Island Independent was called the New Yorker of the Northwest, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think that's been putting on pounds subscription-wise lately, too. So there's niches there. And so the demise of, of some things doesn't mean necessarily that all niches in that medium are going to go away. I think that the, the regional niche is going, to, is going to be viable in complement to the electronic, the website. I think that's where you, I think the, the strength in pairing. And the other idea is you have to sell this to advertisers if you want to make money on it. You don't make much money on the cell phone's hard. But if you've got a paper paper and you've got an online paper, you're able to offer uh, the Freeland Drugs everything they want in one buy. That's pretty nice. So that's the yeah, logic on that. So I'd like to make sure, um, as we're winding down, that before we leave, um, that you have a moment to be absolutely fully acknowledged and yes. appreciated mm -hmm. for the work you do. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I can. <laughs> So I say thank you. Thank you. Um, Thanks for having me. So Thanks for being here, everybody. Yeah. So in final other announcements, um, please make a difference. The Bayview Seniors are doing something really special and enabling that program to grow mm. is huge. It's not your traditional nonprofit donation existing program, but it makes a huge difference for those kids. Um, so the treasure chest is on the outside. The best way that I have of getting in touch with you for programs is just you know my once a month email list. So if you wish to get those, because they don't always get in the paper, there's just a list here you can sign on the way out. Again, we do the same thing. The lists are not given out. Um, it was actually just um, I just received as a Freeland and Langley Chamber member somebody spammed me and said, "Dear Chamber member," and I know the chambers didn't give it out the name. So you know it just shows when things are out of integrity here. So follow your heart, stick to integrity. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for your <coughs> generosity in advance. And we'll see you the next time you're here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.